Hello and welcome. So today we're going to be looking at how to upgrade the Smart Zone platform. So this is valid whether you're on a Smart Zone 100, 300, or even a virtual Smart Zone, whether that be Essentials or High Scale. So to begin the upgrade process, we first of all need to go to Administration. Once we've gone to Administration, we're then going to select Upgrade. Now on the Upgrade tab, it's actually going to tell us our current controller version status, our control plane versions, our data plane software version, and our AP firmware version. So let's upgrade the controller. I'm going to select the image. You may not be able to see this. So I'm going to select the relevant image. Now with this option turned on to run pre-upgrade validations, essentially it's going to make sure that the system has enough CPU and memory assigned to it. It's also going to make sure that we're in the correct upgrade path and that we don't have to have a previous version or it's not supported because we haven't upgraded incrementally in a supported manner. So when I click up below, it's actually going to do all those pre-validation checks for me and we'll come back once it's uploaded. And welcome back. So we can see that the system can be upgraded. That means that we've passed all the validation checks and that the system is happy for us to proceed and it's found no errors. We do have a warning about the number of AP licenses that we have for support that is below the threshold. Um, but it's not going to hinder us, we can still carry on. This is only a demo system. So selecting OK, it's then going to say, do you want to upgrade or do you want to back up and upgrade? Now, if you upgrade, you can't actually roll the controller back to the previous version of 5.0. So what I would always say is perform a backup and upgrade. This allows you to roll back as you need to to version 5 in future. Um, and it's just a safer option. It's something that I've always done and it helps with uh, rollbacks in case there's an error. So selecting backup and upgrade, it's next going to ask us if we want to proceed. It's going to warn us that the access point zones will not automatically be upgraded. That is a feature of the Rucker system whereby it deliberately doesn't upgrade the AP zones. The reason is that you may have access points which aren't compatible with the new firmware. So you may have to lock the zone by not upgrading it. So it's a little bit more manual, but it's actually a safe method of doing so to ensure that your older access points, if you have any, which aren't supported by the new firmware, don't suddenly stop working. It's a way of guaranteeing they'll still work whilst upgrading the controller and then upgrading the zones which can um, take the new firmware along with the access points. So selecting yes, what's going to happen now is about to tell us we're going to back up the controller and it's going to upgrade. So once we do this, the controller's automatically going to restart. So it's just going to tell us about that and it's now going to ask us if we want to continue. So going to select yes and we'll probably find the controller is going to go into maintenance mode. And as you can see, the controller is in maintenance mode. So during this uh, upgrade process, we can't actually do anything. We will get a graphical status on screen um, and we can see at what stage it is and at what point we can log back in. And welcome back. So um, now the upgrade has completed, it'll take you back into the login screen. So we just need to log into the system. So bear with me while I do that. So we'll log in and we may notice an error at the very top left hand side of the screen. Sometimes you get the cluster is not in service notification and we have it right at the very top. So not all management services are node already. This is just because the system services are still beginning. So at this point in time, it's absolutely fine not to worry about. And as you've just seen, it's cleared itself, which is what I was about to say it should do. Now the cluster is back in service and the management services are all up and running, we just need to upgrade the access points. So to do this, we need to first select access points from our panel on the left-hand side. Then we need to go into each of our specific zones. So. I'm going to select one of my zones on the side here. I'm going to click on the more option and I've got the ability to change AP firmware. I'm going to select this and you can see that the current AP firmware is 5.0 and I want it to upgrade to 5.1. So I'm going to select the upgrade to 5.1. It's going to tell me that I'm about to upgrade a new firmware. A backup configuration file will be created and I can use this to do downgrade to the original firmware if required. So I'm going to select yes, it's going to whir away, and it's going to say that it's successfully updated. 
Now what it's actually going to do in the background is all the access points are going to have their firmware pushed to them and they will reboot. This will take around about two minutes. So it's a lot quicker process than actually upgrading the controller itself, which can take up to 40 minutes during the upgrade process. So it's a much cleaner and quicker process to do. So you can do the access points in hours if you really wanted to, but the controller upgrade itself should be done out of hours just as the time it takes. So now the access points are upgraded, we can see that the access points are in version 5.1.0 and that's all there is to it. The access points are now running the latest version of firmware which matches our controller version and they're good to go. Thank you for watching.